Hello there, folks. So it's part two of um, the Essenspiel 2017 vlog. Um, now, in part two, I told you that some games are still coming, so they are finally here. So I'm recording the part two, and I'm just going to show you all the games that I got in the other two boxes that uh, were that came basically that I was anticipating and expecting because. There was a lot of games in those boxes. Some were not for me, some were for, for, for friends, but... Um, I don't know, before the further ado, let's just start. Um, first of all, I got the uh, Scythe expansion, the Wind Gambit. Um, I don't remember much about the game, except it has this air movement and those really cool airships. I really like Scythe, so I'm curious to try another... Like, basically... <laughs> Everything that comes out for Scythe, I'm, I'm really curious about it. And I really like the looks of those airships and, I don't know, just the idea. So, Scythe expansion. Then we have uh, Liberatoris. Uh, it's from Ideas Game Design. I usually play and review their games. And I usually like their games, like Tulip Bubble, Mini Rails, uh, Flow of History, for example. We reviewed uh, all of them and we really like them. And Liberatoris looks really cool. I really like it. It's a neat artwork. And although it's not my type of game, as I understand, it's like a game of different teams. You know, uh, somebody wants to protect Caesar. Uh, there is also a traitor who wants to kill Caesar, as I understand. I don't remember exactly, but you kind of, yeah, it's like a game of suspicion and treachery. So, yeah, I sadly don't remember all the, all the uh, mechanics uh, when I looked at it a long time ago, but it sounds inter it sounds different. I usually don't play that style of games. I usually I'm I'm not into those that style of games, but I'm gonna try it. Maybe this one is really good because I'm I really like more ideas game design games so far. So Liberatoris. Then we have and now this is not a an Essen release. Uh, it's Einstein and Einstein, uh, his amazing life and incomparable science. Uh, it's Dirk uh, Niemeyer's uh, and Artana's um, publishment here. And this one caught my eye because of the... I like the looks of the game. It's a smaller box. It has cards, some tiles. I really like the puzzly aspect of, of placing the tiles. I don't know much about the game. I don't remember, at least. I, I looked at it uh, a long time ago. I think it was on Kickstarter. Something like that. I don't remember. Anyway, um, there are different decks of cards, um, different Einsteins from different uh, life periods, and you're playing them. And it says here cope mo cop mode and competitive mode. I, I think I'm going to play competitive mode. But anyway, just a cool idea, tiling and puzzliness and such. So why not? So let's go for it. So next one is Ilos. I... I've played Illus. I, I played Illus in in the um, in the Motel One in Essen, and I was I, I don't want to say disappointed, but it it wasn't a great experience to be honest. I I think that there are some problems with the game, but I mean I bought the game before I played it, so I played another player's copy, so another person's copy, and then. I also like pre-ordered Illus before, uh, before that. But I have it, and I'm gonna try it again. Um, I think I went into the game with with different expectations. Um, this game looks really cool, gorgeous. But eventually, what you're doing, you are playing cards. In order to play cards, you need to uh, pay for them with other cards, and then you're putting down those ships and resources and such. So, and with Illus. Th that's the, the problem I had is that I think there isn't enough stra different strategies around this. Uh, I think that it's extremely beneficial to have the ship cards, put the ships down and get more cards uh, and get your hand size to the max uh, to then get many more options during uh, further turns. So I'm hoping that maybe I will just tried the... I don't know. I need to try it again and maybe it will click with me. 
um, I think it should be a light game, and it is a light light game. I'm just maybe I was just, just expecting something else. Anyway, Illus, uh, those kind of a exploration small car game type thing. So then we have um, from the same. It was from the same booth that I got, but it's uh, these are different companies. Yeah. So this is Paper Tales. Looks really really cool. I. Found this game a long time ago on the internet and, and on BGG. It was on my wish list. And I think I took it off the wish list and put it back on my wish list. Don't know why. I heard that it's like a deck builder. I'm like, oh, yet another deck builder. But it looks really, really cool. And uh, that's what I like. Um, the cover is just amazing. And then I heard that it's not just a simple kind of a deck builder type, you know. Um, it's a really neat card game. And I'm all ears about card games so I thought I should try this one and you have the you can the, put the cards down the cards are in front or behind they attack they do something blah 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 anyway you, you get money you get points cool neat uh, I really want to try this one I yeah, the games that I show you right now um, although I have bought them I don't remember like I've researched quite a few games uh, before I bought them or heard about them. Many cool things. That's why, like, I skipped some games and, and bought the others. Some games I bought because the company is great and I I love their uh, approach to to the production and such. So and I really like I usually like their games. So that's why I also also buy games. But uh, Paper Tales is something that just caught my eye. It's a car game. It should have a really neat mechanism. Let's try. Anyway, um, then we have Exodus Fleets, and the box got damaged a little bit. My anyway, and um, I'm not into space theme, um, and I'm not interested in that theme at all. But it should be a resource management Euro type game, and I usually like TMG stuff, so I'm curious to try. Uh, Exodus fleets, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it will go. Um, it looks um, like it looks a little bit bland. I mean, like the the art is not as evocative. The art is not as good. But I really enjoy TMG's games, so I'm hoping for a good game. That's Exodus fleets. Uh, then we have Pioneer Days, and that was on my uh, most anticipated uh, games list. Uh, also, and this one has dice drafting and different cards, those different special people, and they are all different. The replayability should be huge, and it's like a managing your dice as kind of resources when you draft them, but you draft them all together from the center, and there are some cataclysms and such like, happening and like a bad events, but you kind of know what will happen, what you have kind of you kind of manipulate that as well. So it sounds really neat. It looks amazing. The the components behind it, those little cows and such. So I really like the components. I usually like TMG games. So I'm really looking forward to try this game called Pioneer Days. Then let's go further. Oh my God, I'm going to review this one. <laughs> and I didn't know it was that heavy, but it is Halloween. Um, lately... Last Essen, we uh, got Vanuatu and Papa Paolo, which we reviewed, we really, really liked. And this year, they produced Halloween and Agra. I'm going to talk about Agra uh, later. But this one, Halloween, first of all, it's it's cool theme. You're playing ghosts, trying to scare off uh, everyone and trying to get the more scare points, as I understand. I don't remember exactly. Anyway, so, you're playing ghosts, scaring people. So, and this should be kind of euro -y type of game. I don't like... I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of, of the, the, the art here and how it looks. It looks really darkish, uh, purple, black thing, you know. Not really a big fan, but I'll, overall I do like the components inside. The components are really cool inside. And overall, I'm just curious to try another game after one other and Papa Paolo. I realized that Quinnet Games, if they do a good production with their games, uh, they can do great games. <laughs> Especially Vanuatu was, uh, like, I, I gave it 8 out of 10. So I really like Vanuatu. It, it's really thinky. I know it's crunchy, it's euro -y, So I'm hoping for that crunchy, euro -y, thinky 
but not too dry gameplay. One of wasn't dry game, in my opinion. That's Halloween. So let's go further. There are many, many games, so I'm going to talk a lot. Oh, yeah. So this is another game that I'm going to review. Uh, this is Okanagan Valley of the Lakes. I got this one because of because it's Matagat. Uh, I mean, it's Matagat, so I'm really, I really want to try all their games um, or most of their games, let's say. Because I really love this company and what they do and what games they do, how they do that. Uh, you know, my number one game is Cycle D, so. And Kemet is really high for me as well. And I like Dice Town, I like um, Expedition Office Passage um, and uh, Raptor. And, you know, anyway. So, um, yet again, I don't remember much about the game. I was. Um, Fabienne showed me the game in Gen Con, uh, explaining the game, but. Just don't remember. I remember that I was interested in it. It kind of looks like a Carcassonne. It doesn't look. It doesn't look appealing to me. I know, uh, but the the it's kind of have this has this kind of a Carcassonne vibe. But how you score stuff and such. So some people say it's boring. Some people don't like it. I have heard uh, some people really like it. So I'm hoping for a good game here. Maybe I will like it, maybe not. But I'm hoping that I will like this game. That's Okanagan Valley of the uh, of the Lakes. So let's go further. This is not a an Essen release, but I had an old copy of Colosseum, and I really liked the game. But eventually, like Alina didn't like it that much, and we didn't play. It, and I was like, maybe I. Maybe I'm just overthinking. Maybe it's not that great of a game. So we sold the game. And now I, I was thought like, oh, I, I don't know. I really want this game. So I sold this game in the auction. And it's a new edition. This this deluxified edition. And I'm fine with the art in the deluxified edition. It looks a little bit more childish. Yeah, but I'm, I'm fine with it. You know, I'm not like super excited about it. I, I liked how the old edition looked like. And I do like how the new edition looks like, and it's a heavy box. It has a lot of stuff in it, but eventually the game should be the same. And I like Colosseum, and I really, when I, when I was thinking about Colosseum right now, I mean, like, when I was thinking about buying this new edition, or from the auction, from the Essen auction, uh, I was like, hmm, do I really like this game? Do, did I really like this game when I played it? Yes. Yeah, it was cool, it was different. You are putting down the shows and you are trying to get the high score and then the high score is something that will win you the game if you do the best high score. And that's really cool, you need the different components, you're circling around this this uh, uh, road, uh, trying to get the nobles onto your arenas, building up arenas, getting it bigger, better and whatever. It's just a neat idea, I really like it. That's Colosseum. Um, now I got it as well. Oh my god, it's extremely heavy. Now let's go with here, Queen Domino. I like King Domino, um, but and I played King Domino quite a few times, especially considering that I don't play games, all the games, that many times because usually I don't have enough time to play. But I get a lot of games, so many of the games I've played only like. Once, twice, you know. If of course, if I if I review the game, I played more. But I mean, if I just have the game, I, I I can play it only once, and then I'm very strict. If I don't like it, I'm gonna sell it. Or like if I liked it, but you know, nah. Anyway, but I played Kingdom quite a few times because it's easy, easy to play it. But also, I really enjoyed the gameplay, and I enjoyed it as a two-player game. As enjoyed it as a four-player game, and Kingdom you know, was a hit, and it is a hit. But now Queen Domino came out, and they say Queen Domino is like uh, King Domino Plus, it's better. So I was like, yes, why not? And I would love to see a little bit more game in King Domino. So now we have Queen Domino, the production is really, really cool as always. So that's Queen Domino. Really interested to try this one. Now this game is Raid on Taihoku. Uh, this is a co cooperative game um, that 
it does really need production. I really like the production of the game and the, the art style and the boxes looks really amazing. Uh, it's about this, but it's about the sad historical event of two, Second World War and bombing of, of uh, Taihoku. Um, I had some, I played it lately and I had some rule issues uh, I need to clarify, but I need to kind of contact someone to clarify, so I'm trying to contact the designer. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, Raiden Taihoku, um, it's a neat idea, but I don't know if I really liked the game. It was, it felt too easy. Maybe as a two-player game. I think maybe with more players it will be better. Also, maybe because of some rules issues, I didn't really understand that we played something wrong. So I want to try it again. I think I want to review this game as well. And see where it lands. Uh, Raiden Taihoku, cooperative game. You are uh, going around the city, uh, gathering resources and trying to survive. And there are raids. The, the, the air bombers come and uh, the bombers come and they uh, bomb the city in different uh, locations. And if you get under the, the bomb, you lose health and uh, you want to eat. And your moral drops and you kind of try to uh, get those... Um, uh, your your uh, different tracks to 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 the max to get to score most points in the end of the game, but yeah, you can also if if some if one of your stats uh, is uh, down to zero, you will lose automatically. All the team will lose automatically. So it's a really neat idea. I'm just hoping that maybe I played something wrong, or maybe it's better with bigger amount of players. We'll see. That's Raid on Taihoku. Then we have, uh, this is not a new release, but I, I played the new Tikal from Super Meeple. Uh, I really like their production. And this is Mexica. Um, eventually we sold Tikal for, for different reasons, but I really like Tikal. It's, it's, I know why, it's, why it is a classic, but I, I realized that not really for me. But this is also abstract, but I mean, this looks different. This, this looks... This looks amazing, this new production. So I was just curious to try Mexica, building up pyramids, very abstractish, but great looking. That's why I bought it. I don't know the other reason why I bought this one. That's Mexico. So then we have, um, oh, let's continue with Super Meeple. Uh, they also had this edition of Amon Re, which is a card game Amon Re. I'm, I was looking at Amon Ray and I really like, like Super Meeple production that is, is amazing. The art they do is amazing. You look at this. The box cover is great. And I like all sorts of card games. I'm not into auctions that much. But I was thinking like, I really want to try Amon Ray at some point. And then they say, oh, we will have a card game at this. And I was like, yes. As a card game, smaller box, um, maybe a little bit more approachable, smaller, uh, tighter. And like... I don't know, I'm just expecting a little bit more from a card game at this point uh, as auction game. And I'm hoping for a great game. That's Amon Re from Reiner Kranitzia and Super Meeple. Then we have a Kickstarter pickup, uh, Kitchen Rush, but it was on sale in Essen as well. This is a real-time cooperative game where you are... Basically managing the kitchen and trying to get the dishes out to the customers and score points or whatever. You know, the, there are different ingredients you're trying to grab and spices and put them on the plates and serve them and blah, blah, blah. You need to wash dishes. Do you need to wash dishes? I think you need to wash dishes as well. Anyway, it looks extremely thematic, like this kind of a restaurant management stuff and kitchen, kitchen rush, basically. And I really like the idea. I saw... Um, the uh, Rathos video about this one, I was like, yeah, I, w I want this game. So here it is, uh, that's Kitchen Rush. So then, I would say one of the most beautiful games I brought from uh, Essen, it reminds me a little bit, like, it's it's not Vincent Dutre, but it has those kind of um, uh, watery colors in it, but it's not Vincent Dutre, but, but it's Guild. And when I looked at guilds, I was like, ah, the, the theme, medieval times, and like, ah, oh my god, 
but uh, when I looked at, there was some pictures of some tiles and they were amazing. And I opened the box and I, I, I saw all the art on those different tiles and all the details on those tiles. It's just, and cards and, and everything. It just, I really like how it looks. This game looks amazing. And I'm hoping for a great game as well here. And I, I, I think I bought it because uh, of uh, I heard that it's like a medium, like it has the styling aspect, building your rooms, and it looks amazing, and that it should be a medium weight game, and different characters are, and cards, and I don't know, just a gut feeling that it should be a really cool game, so I'm hoping for a great game. Maybe it's not, but it looks amazing. That's guilds. Then the game I've played with the Dice Tower team with Sam. Uh, we played with Sam, Kenny, and um, Eric. And this is Santa Maria. And I don't know where I stand um, regarding this game. I think. Uh, I don't really know. I, I think I like it. Um, but the, the issue I had, it's not really an issue, but maybe just. Some something that I'm afraid of show like there's some people in my gaming group that can think too long and this game at the beginning this game doesn't give you too many choices but it kind of gives you very many choices so you have this and this and this and this moves this one and this one you know this kind of a mechanism is kind of a Stefan Feldy type you know thing but this is with dice and you are uh, you are sometimes drafting dice or doing the other actions in order to activate. Yeah, you're drafting dice in order to activate your row or column. Uh, in your row or column, basically, at first you you it, it's not built up, but further in the game you you build it up more and more and more, and thus you get more and more and more actions when you activate the rows or columns with the dice and your turns become longer and your options become bigger and you're wondering what should I do. And it creates an AP, I think, during the... It's not like a completely AP-prone game, but further into the game, it drags out. So that was my initial thought about the game. But I really like all the idea, but it's extremely abstract. You're just activating rows and you get the resources. You are, you are spending those resources to get those tiles that give you victory points at the end of the game, kind of shipments. And then you get some things for those shipments, some bonuses, blah, blah, blah. You're moving on those different tracks, on this monk track, on this uh, loot track, whatever, knight track, conquistador track, to get more uh, like tokens to then get the end game bonuses, end game scoring conditions to score uh, kind of points uh, during each round, blah, blah. Anyway, points, 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 points on game, kind of. So this is Santa Maria. I'm really looking forward to trying this again with this kind of a um, thought that, okay, this, is, this game is going to be like that, you know? And then maybe I will like it much more. So, um, then we have... Oh my god, Charter Stone. Yes, uh, some people already got this game, played and reviewed this game, but I have not. And I cannot say much about the game except it's a hero game with legacy aspect. And... I know that Dice Store said that there's not much story in the game, like the story isn't that convincing, you know, but I, I feel like I don't care. I feel like um, I really want to try, like, I want this because of the mechanism more than because of the story. I'm not really looking forward to the story. I'm looking forward to the legacy game, which is approachable, where my first game will be different from the from the second game, from the third game, blah, blah, blah. And so each game will be different because something changed permanently. I like this idea and I'm hoping, like, it's one of my most anticipated games of 2017. So like, really looking forward to this one. So uh, that's Charter Stone. Let me just grab... My oh, God, it's so heavy. <sighs> ah, it's Agra. The board looks gorgeous. The board is just gorgeous from Michael Menzel. I love the board. It's just amazing, amazing art. Uh, all the other components are fine. They're good. Some are like a little bit boring, but the board is just amazing art. The components and look, it has a ton of components and the quality of them and everything is just, wow. 
the theme, I'm, I'm not keen on the theme. It's like kind of training in Mediterranean, blah, 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 whatever, merchants. I don't care. But uh, I'm going to review this one. And yeah, I'm just really looking forward for this crunchy Vanuatu type of, uh, uh, of game. And this is a heavy error or heavy Euro game. I don't know exactly, but it has a lot of really cool, but a lot of components and a lot of moving parts. And when I looked at the rules, there's a lot of rules. So I'm hoping for a great game here, for a great crunchy Euro game. So we'll see if it will deliver, but I'm really anticipating Agra. So then we have Coaster Park. And I bought this one Probably because of the idea when you build up your coasters, uh, coaster park with those 3D elements and then you, um, you you throw the marble on them and then the marble just rides on that roller coaster and blah, 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 whatever. Um, yeah, just the idea. Small auction, you're auctioning things and then you are just throwing those marbles and then they go through. You, you get something, I don't know, <laughs> just just the idea, it, it looks cool, it looks neat, it looks different, why not, that's why I bought it, I know, sometimes it's weird, sometimes it's just, it's a gut feeling that uh, it's a game that I might enjoy as a light game with some people that are not much, much into games, but, or for those lighter evenings where we don't want to think too much, so, then we have Palace of Mad King Ludwig, oh, it's not that heavy anymore, because it had a lot of punch boards. It's like, it's full of stuff. I mean, this, this, this box has a lot of tiles, a lot. And I adore Castles of Mad King Ludwig. Um, it's, yeah, I, I just love Castles of Mad King Ludwig. And Palace of Mad King Ludwig gives you the opportunity to build, now, the palace, the castle, all together. You're still competing with each other, uh, you're getting points separately, but you're building one big thing in the center instead of each one of you building separate stuff. And it's a sequel to Castle Matthew Ludwig, so that's why I'm interested. I mean, like, why not? I, I adore the other games, so I'm sure I'm going to like this one as well. Then we have Cosmo Genesis. Cosmo Genesis is... Okay, now that's the thing. I'm not into space theme games uh, but if it's a scientific space like the, the the like terraforming mars for example was a really cool idea i really like this this theme i i'm not really into sci-fi type you know space like star wars and such but but this one is you are basically um you are creating your own star system i the theme uh, the, the box cover is just amazing the box cover is just cool but this should be a crunchy kind of a simulation euro type game i'm hoping for that rules are written fine but i really like the idea of kind of creating your own star system planetary system and blah 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 so i'm hoping for a really really good game in this one um i'm hoping that yeah it might be difficult it might be like a simulation but the theme is so um, like appealing to me that I might overlook the other things and just enjoy the game. Then we have Otis. The cover looks really, really cool. Now, the gameplay. Um, of course, I bought this game before, and then I recently I watched the Dice Tower playthrough of Otis, and I was like... You're getting this cube and that cube and that cube and sliding this tile and then it was really boring to watch this game to be honest, but I tried to understand how the game works and such so but I bought it only before watching this video, so it's like I don't know now if I will like the game. But I'm hoping that I will. Uh, it's just you are trying to gather the right resources to fulfill contracts and get victory points, and that's basically it. But this diving kind of mechanism, the production is really cool, and this diving mechanism, as I understand it, has like kind of a, you, you are uh, sliding those tiles, there are different, whatever, there are different people, have different, they have different abilities, so it's like a variability in abilities, variability in abilities, doesn't sound cool, anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying autism, maybe 
proving myself that I didn't do a bad blind buy. But I did a blind buy with all this kind of... It wasn't my shortest, one of my wish list. But I didn't think I will buy it. But I still bought this game. Don't know why. Um, I was searching for Unlock. And I was like, oh, this, it's here. Right, I can grab it right away and just... Yeah. Yeah, all this. Then we have the last... Yes, it is the last one. Yay, it is. And that's Bunny Kingdom. Um, I'm going to review this game. And there are already lots of videos about Bunny Kingdom, as I, as, I, as I know. It's like an area control with bunnies. Abstractish, very, very mathematic, uh, puzzly with cards and such. So I'm going to spend too much time talking about this one. But I'm really looking forward to trying Bunny Kingdom. I'm really hoping for a, for a crunchy, puzzly... Uh, midweight, um, uh, I don't know it's, if it is a Euro game, but looks cool. Anyway, and seems like that's it. These are the games that, except the ones that are behind me. So a, a total of like 46, 45 different items, plus the games for the other uh, people. But yeah, only one expansion, only one. No, yeah, the Tolu expansion is not for me, but... But for myself, only Scythe was an, was an expansion. Everything else are the, the games, the, the full game, base games. So, this is the final video where I sh showed you all the other Essen Hall stuff that I brought home. Anyway, thanks for watching. We see you another time in another video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Find us anywhere we have BGG Guild. Um, I have BGG Guild. I can say we. Anyway, uh, also the Patreon is still going. You can do uh, PayPal, uh, one of sums as well if you want to support the channel. And I, I, let me tell you money is not the most important. If you just subscribe to the channel and you share the channel and show it to the others, that's worth more than money. Really. <coughs> My throat is so dry. But anyway, thanks for watching. We see you another time. Bye bye. This channel is sponsored by Osprey Games. Check them out at ospreypublishing.com.